Hey, Jim, do you have a minute to chat? Absolutely. Love to help, Christina. Great. So in most industries, EDI is required. It has been for a while to work with our retailers and distributors, but there seems to be more options than ever on how to do EDI. So what is the easiest way for those new to EDI to just navigate those choices? The way to simplify it is to really put all the options into two buckets. Um, one bucket would be a uh, EDI software, whether it's on-premise or in the cloud, a B2B integration tool, again, on-prem or in the cloud where the company buys basically the technology or the software, but is then on the hook to add the staff required to operate it. The okay. other so, bucket of options would just be hiring a firm that does both the tech and the staffing in a outsourcing or full service manner. So then are all cloud options full service? There are cloud options that are you get the tool and somebody on your staff manages it and then there's also cloud options that provide that plus do the staffing as part of their service as well okay both sound like viable options but how does a company actually decide what's best for them the best way to figure out what path to go is really to ask yourself one key question which is is EDI for your company a core competency? Um, if your company happens to answer that uh, as yes, this is a core competency, then it probably makes sense for you to go down the path of choosing uh, one of the options where you're primarily buying the technology and having your staff do the work. If already EDI is a, obviously an important thing, it's necessary, but it's not a core competency, then a company should be looking at um, the option where you're not only getting the tech, but you're also getting as part of that service the, uh, the staffing and expertise to make sure that that works properly inside of your company. So speaking of staffing then, today's EDI function, it's a lot more than just mapping. What other aspects should we inquire about for resourcing? Yeah, I think, you know, like every software product out there, um, there somebody's got to get the thing up and running. Um, somebody has to um, make sure it's working on an ongoing basis. I, I think in the case of EDI, there is definitely a proactive component to that uh, to make sure that, you know, orders aren't getting lost or errors aren't happening. Uh, frequently there is some effort associated with integrating into your um, systems of record, uh, potentially uh, getting the handshake working with a partner like a 3PL, depending on how your company manages their inventory and fulfillment. Um, what is unique is a system like this, EDI, is always being used with other companies. So there's a, there's a big B2B component here. Uh, where understanding what the requirements of each of your trading partners are and then also when things break um, there's almost always a conversation with another company to diagnose what what happened and then put together a plan to handle it on either one end or the other or in some cases both ends to remedy the situation so those you know at a high level that that's the kind of staffing work that typically goes along with uh, an EDI um, capability. So to clarify that, I guess you're saying if I have a managed service and something breaks, who's actually calling that retailer then to figure out what's wrong and who has to fix it? That is typically um, a job that is part of the EDI person's job description. So if there is a bug with Amazon, uh, somebody in the company frequently has to reach out to Amazon and, and get the work done. If you go down the path of a, a capability where that is on you, the company, to provide that staffing function, then somebody on your company needs to be able to perform that task. Um, 
if you're in the uh, full service option, that would be something that company would provide on your behalf. Um, so if a, something blew up, there's a bug, uh, they would be proactively on it, uh, monitoring for it, catch it, see who it, it, the issue with, and have a relationship with that retailer as well, reach out to them and manage that issue uh, on your behalf. Okay. So those two options are pretty clear. I can see how a full service option becomes even more important than when I start to add more and more trading partners, especially when it's not my core competency. Yeah, that is a, it is a very unique um, requirement for, for EDI is that uh, doing it well requires you to be an expert in other companies' business processes and requirements. So as you add more trading partners, somebody in your company has got to keep track of, well, here's what Walmart wants versus what Amazon wants versus what partner Y and Z want as well. Stay on top of those requirements. And, you know, as they change and get updated, you know, make sure everything on your side gets updated as well as have a relationship to... When things go wrong, um, figure out how to resolve them. And usually, if you're the supplier, it, the burden of proof is on you to prove that you're not the problem. Um, so usually, the uh, the initial work has to be picked up by you to to get the uh, the ball moving on a fix. Right. So it seems like it is still really confusing for a supplier to know exactly what they are getting especially if they don't have the Jim Fromey as an industry expert to guide them. I'm wondering how can they ask the right questions then to know what they really are and aren't buying? I think it boils down to, um, you know, uh, one of the requirements uh, when most people are shopping for a solution around in the marketplace is all things being equal, they usually would like to understand what option provides the least amount of work for that company. Uh, there's a business component of that that's you know kind of around does this thing support my business process and help me uh, reduce you know keystrokes and data entry and things like that. But then there's a obviously a big section on the staffing, and I think knowing what those main components of the staffing are. And then asking a pointed question about those is the best way to get to the bottom of it. There's, you know, who's going to do the implementation work? What's on me versus what's on you? Once this thing is up and running, what's on me versus you to make sure it's running? Uh, if something goes down, getting it back up and running. If there's heirs, who's monitoring for them, catching them, taking action. Uh, there's an issue with the trading partner who detects that, who calls the retailer and has the discussion to figure out how to issue it. If there's a change to a trading partner map or rule, how is that done? Is that done by somebody on the staff of the company that downloads it, drops it in the environment and tests it? Or does the provider do that on your behalf so that you know, you're not really ever having a staff person do any of these kinds of things. Um, that's part of the reason they came to SPS Congress, because we are in that full service camp. Okay. Well, thanks for showing the clear differences among the options. It sounds like with just a few questions to providers, it's, it's easy to see the work that they're responsible for and what the provider takes on. If there was just one question, you'd have suppliers ask that EDI provider uh, to determine what bucket that they fall in. What would that be? The question, I think there'd be two, actually. I would, I would have the company ask themselves, hey, is EDI a core competency? I think in general, most companies, if they're being honest with them, it's a very important needed thing, but it is not a core competency. It isn't how they differentiate themselves in the marketplace. It's a back office system that just has to work, um, which means they're more likely to be interested in the full service option. And then I think the questions to the providers have to zero in on really understanding what do you do here versus what I do here? What do you do here versus what I do here? Got it. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome.